chunk of tire in the road. Oh, <laughs> oh. Now, the insulation truck just flipped it in the air. Almost took me out. Did you see that? Yogi Clan, welcome back to Yogi Cycle Service. I'm happy you are back here with us today. So we are back on the bike today, and what are we going to talk about today? We are going to talk about blockers and how to effectively use them. And I figured the best way to talk about blockers is to ride down the road so you can see how I use blockers and how I think about using blockers. So the important thing to remember about blockers and to think when thinking about blockers is making sure you know your route. In order to effectively use blockers, you have to really know your route that your group ride is going on. If you don't know the route, how are you going to be able to use your blockers? So A number one, before you start this ride, you should have ridden the route at least once. And when you ride that route, you need to mentally think, okay, well, I'm coming up to an intersection. I'm going to use X amount of blockers here. And as you come up to your next intersection, okay, I'm going to use X amount of blockers at this intersection. Okay, this third intersection, I'm going to use X amount of blockers here. That way you figure out what your total quantity of blockers is. But what you need to also think of is, okay, well, when am I going to get these blockers from the back of the pack back to the front of the pack? How does that happen? What does that look like? All things that we really need to discuss and really need to talk about. So let's roll the opening intro and then we'll dig on in. All right, Yogi Clan, welcome back. So, I am coming up to a stop sign intersection. If I were coming up to this stop sign intersection, it's kind of like a T intersection here. If I were to be turning right, so let's pretend like we're turning right at this intersection. If I'm turning right, I'm gonna use one blocker and I'm gonna stage him over there on the left to block what's coming from that way. So if I got one blocker covering from the left, I'm clear. Okay, so now I've lost one blocker to the back of the pack. If that blocker is on the back of the pack, now here I turn right on this road, how is he gonna get back to the front of the pack? Well, two options. One, three options really. One, you stay in a bar to bar formation and he crosses over that double yellow line and runs up the other lane to get back to the front. Number two, you drop, you put the one symbol up above your head like we talked about earlier this week in hand signals. You drop to a single file line, you all move like this over to the right hand lane to leave the left hand lane open. That way he can run down the left side and drop back in behind the leaders of the pack. Or third option, you wait till you get your next stop sign or a traffic light and then you hold the pack still to allow the blockers to come around come around the pack and get back up to the front all that is going to depend upon the size of your pack if you have 20 people in your pack yeah it's probably easier to drop to single file and have the blockers run from the back to get to the front if you have six people in your pack, it's probably easier for the blockers just to go around the pack and get back up to the front because you're not putting them in harm's way for very long. If you got 100 people in your pack, it's probably best to stop at the next intersection and just hold the pack and wait for the blockers to get back up to the front of the pack. Now, before all this, I should preface it really with saying you want your blockers to be the most experienced riders you have. If you are in a motorcycle club, I would suggest your blockers are full patch members, the most experienced. Sometimes we'll use prospects to do it, but I have found over the years and my experience having prospects only do it 
they have not had enough pack riding time to really know how to effectively block. I do not trust prospects to block unless they are seasoned riders and they've had quite a few pack riding experiences under their belt. I just don't trust them because they don't know what they're doing. So I would much rather have a full patch member do the blocking who's been on multiple pack rides and who knows how they work. It makes it so much easier. If you're not in an MC, then I suggest to you to pick pick some of your buddies who are seasoned riders and who ride with you a lot. And if you're the leader of the pack, they know your style. They know how you run the ship. They know how you lead a ride. They know the route because you've ridden it with them already. And they're fully up to speed before you even start the group ride. So pick seasoned riders because there may be some points where you know blocking let's face it it can be dangerous you are blocking cars so for instance if i were going around this u-turn i would use one blocker to block that line of traffic in case this light changes to red we can keep the whole pack moving because your whole goal with a blocker the whole point of blocking is to keep that pack together as one solid unit and those blockers need to prevent any cars from getting in there and if the light changes they need to block the intersection to allow the pack to fully get through it and stay together so it does put them in a dangerous position so they need to know that and they need to be prepared for that so i'm going to use our most recent run the orphan run as an example we rode through the pre-ride of the route probably four times and on the fourth time that I went through it, I counted each and every intersection and said, okay, I'm gonna use two blockers, two blockers at this intersection. Okay, I'm gonna use two blockers at this intersection. And then one at this intersection. Oh, here's a stop sign. So I'm down five blockers. Now they can catch back up again. Okay, and you go through another three or four intersections. Okay, I'm down six blockers. They can catch back up, and here's a spot where they can catch back up again. So as I did that ride, mentally planned it in my head, I thought, you know, I need six blockers in order to accomplish this ride because of the course, because of the route. And when it actually came the, the night before the ride, I thought, you know what, instead of doing six blockers, I want to add two just in case and make it eight blockers just in case something happens and you know maybe they drop to the back of the pack after they've blocked but somebody breaks down and they stop and help someone who breaks down which is actually what happened <laughs> so I lost two of the blockers in the middle of the ride because they helped another guy who who broke down so two of my blockers boom gone and had I not had eight instead of six I, I would have been handicapped. I would have been down and those other guys would have been having double duty. And if they're in the back of the pack and they can't get to the front because we're on country roads and there's no opportunity for them to get back up front because when we have 80 bikes in a pack, I do not want them. I don't want them running down the opposite lane to catch up. And I don't want us going single file because if you're running 80 bikes and you go single file, that line's gonna stretch out forever. And if that line stretches out forever, it, it just it becomes a nightmare, a logistical nightmare. So you don't want to do that. So go through your route, figure out how many blockers you need, then add two. Just to make sure you have enough. Because you may lose some along the way for broken down bikers or whatever the situation happens. Let's talk about intersections and how and how we do it. When we get to an intersection and I need blockers. The person who is leading the ride needs to have control. When you get to an intersection, let's say you get to an intersection and you need two, blo two blockers, right? What I'll do, the hand signal for blockers is I'll just put my fist up like this and I'll do two. So if I need two blockers, I'll fist two. If I need, and then I'll, then I'll point the directions that I want them to block. So like, so let's say we need one blocker to the left because we're making a right turn. So I'll go hand, one, left. Or hand, two, right, and left. So I'm signaling to them 
okay guys because the blockers are right behind the leaders of the pack so all eight of them will be like right behind me so they're all watching when we're coming up to an intersection if i'm throwing a hand signal out and obviously that particular hand signal does not get passed down the pack that hand signal stops at the blockers so look we're coming up to this light here well there's two lanes heading that heading that direction so i'm not going to block this side because i'm going to screw up that lane so when I get to here, I'm going to signal, hey, I need one blocker over here. So one guy will drop off and block that intersection there. That way no traffic coming in from this way can stop. Hopefully any traffic that's turning left coming this way will see that blocker over on this side of the road. And we're flowing through. Everything's hunky-dory. No problems. And then after that blocker is done, since we have two lanes, he can run up this side of the lane and catch back up to the front of the pack. So it's easy when you have a four lane road like this because the blockers can shoot up this lane next to us and catch back up in the pack. The hardest intersection is when you say not when we're flowing this way, but for instance, our ride actually came out right over here by this Circle K gas station. And we were heading this way and turning left on this road to go in this direction. And I used three blockers at this intersection. I used one over there. I used one for the traffic coming in this way. And I used one for to cover this lane here. So some intersections you'll need three blockers. Now, when you call for two blockers and you have the blockers behind you. So let's say I come up to a, a, a four-way intersection and I call... And I say, hey, I need two blockers, one to the right, one to the left. Now you got two people, two people right behind you. I would say that those, the two blockers come around, come around the leaders in this way. Come around. Do not ever have your blockers cut you off. So the guy that comes up for the left is going to block on the left. The guy that comes up for the right is going to block on the right. Do not ever have a blocker come up. So if you call for for one to block on the right hand side yeah, that would probably never happen because if you're blocking on the right you're always going to be blocking on the left but I've had it in the past where prospects who don't know what they're doing you know if I call for two blockers two of them will come up on the left hand side of me one will block left and the other will cut across from me and block right don't ever have them cut across you it's a, again a dangerous situation because when they pull up next to you they are going to stay and wait next to you. The blockers do not decide when they go out into the intersection. If they do, I yell at them. They wait on me and my command to go. I'm leading the ride, not them. You're leading the ride, not them. When you're ready to go, then you tell them, okay, go. They go out to block. As soon as they're set up, then the pack rolls. And... and that's one of the very important reasons why if you're going to be blocking to the right and there are two people in the front of the pack, the leader and the person to the right of him, and you call for two blockers, that second blocker needs to come up from the right-hand side. You don't have two coming up for the left. I can't stress that because you don't. You know, if you tell them to go and they go out and the second guy stalls for a little bit before he goes because he's waiting on the first person to go to the left, and then he's going to decide to come over and cut you off, but you're not paying attention. You start going from the intersection. Well, now he's coming to cut you off, and you two are going to crash into each other. So whenever you're doing two blockers or even three blockers at an intersection, have one come up from the right and two come up from the left. <clears throat> Wait on your signal. You signal them to go. As soon as they have cleared you, and the first one on the left is set up, go ahead and pull your pack out. But the importance is having seasoned riders who know that. If you don't have seasoned riders, it turns into a mess. And I've been on way too many rides where it's a mess because you don't have pre-ride planning. So when you're going to be running blockers and your run's on a Saturday, on Friday night you should all be sitting down and going over the route. I had the route printed out on directions, and I told these guys, okay, at this intersection, we're going to be using X amount of blockers, this intersection, X amount of blockers, and oh, at this next intersection, it's going to be a stop sign, and that's when you guys can catch back up again. 
So I mentally walk them through the ride before the day of the event. That way, when the next day comes, they have confidence. They know you're going to take care of them. They know you're looking out for their best interest. They know the route. They know where they're going to be catching up. They know how you're going to run the route. And, and it works. So it's like it turns it into a well-oiled machine when you do it that way. Also, when you do it that way, before the ride starts, you need to have a pre-ride talk with all the participants in the ride. And during that pre-ride talk, you're going to tell them how you're going to use the blockers. Remember, those blockers are like, treat them like they're your employees. You give them direction on how to do their job. Yes, they're putting their life on the line. The, the people that are part and participating in the ride need to know what it's going to look like, need to know how to look out for the blockers, need to know how the blockers are going to pass to get back up to the front and be fully educated on how this is going to work and how this is going to roll. If you do that, you will have a successful ride. This year for the Orphan Run, that was, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but that was the best blocking I have ever seen because it was organized. We all, the blockers and me, all rode the route prior to the run. Everybody knew the route. Everybody knew where to block. Everybody knew the intersections that were going to be dangerous and challenging. And they were all seasoned riders. They've all blocked before. They know the drill. They knew the route. They knew their job. And basically, they just listen to my direction and they said oh yeah I need you need to go over here okay block over here all right I got it and then they blocked it and they executed and it was like flawless it was perfect it was awesome but it took a lot of pre-ride work to make that happen if you don't do the pre-ride work it's going to show during your ride so I encourage you to really give it a lot of thought that's one area that people don't really pay a whole lot of attention they kind of do a quick little okay this is what we're going to do and this is how we're going to do it and I don't know it just it doesn't work it doesn't work and that will change the riding experience for the person who's participating in that ride that you want to come back and support your ride next year if it's a, a cluster I hate to use the second half of that word I'm trying to think of something better but if it's a cluster you know what? People are not going to come back next year and support your ride. They think it was dangerous, and they think it was a mess, and it was just a really crappy pack experience. They're not going to come back and support you next year. And that's what you want. That's your ultimate goal if you're doing a fundraiser ride, is to have it be awesome. And have people come support you year after year and say, yeah, man, that ride was great. I want to do that ride again next year. And when that ride comes up next year, oh yeah, they're going to tell all their friends that was an awesome ride. I had a great time. The pack, I felt safe in the pack. Everybody was controlled. It was just, you know, it was a really good experience. You got to go on this ride with me. Come with me. Let's, let's do this. And you'll get re repeat customers. And that's what you want because that helps you raise the money that you're trying to raise for your fun fundraisers, for your charity. So blocking, it doesn't have to be hard. It just has to be well thought out. But the basic mechanics are know your intersections, plan out what blockers you need at what intersections, plan out how they're going to catch back up to the front. And, and really, it's kind of, they just fall in behind the blockers that are in front of them. So you have the leaders, you have the blockers, then you have the pack behind you. So when a, a blocker is coming back up to fall in line, he falls behind the blockers that are in front of him. He doesn't need to pass and get in front of his fellow blockers. It's just it's just like a line up, like you're getting in line at the cafeteria. Fall in line. Get behind your fellow blockers. And then when they peel off, you move up, you move up further to the front. Once you get up to the front, then you're next to block. It's that simple. Remember. Keep it simple, stupid, but plan. Because failing to plan is planning to fail. So if you want your ride to be killer, plan it out. Test ride the run. 
lay out the run, test ride the run, plan your blockers, teach your blockers, inform your blockers, have your blockers ride the route with you. When you're done, talk about the route, talk about the dangerous intersections. When they're all on the same page, bam, you're good to go. Now, what happens in a situation of you're, you want to do an impromptu group ride? And you don't really know the route all that well. I would say the more blockers, the merry. You know, and that's really going to depend upon the size of the pack. If you got 10 people in the pack, yeah, you can probably get away with two blockers. You got 30, 40 people in the pack, yeah, you can probably get away with four blockers. You get 60 plus people in the pack, you may want six or eight blockers. The smaller the packs, the easier it is for the blockers to get back up to the front to block the intersection. The larger the packs, the harder it is for them to get back up to the front to block the next intersection. If you're over 100 people in your pack and you're doing a charity ride, if it's not a poker run but it's an out and back ride versus a poker run where you have multiple stops, if it's one big long ride, 60, 70, 80 mile ride, and you're expecting more than 100 coming, I would highly encourage a police escort. Because when you get more than 80 bikes, it becomes virtually impossible to make it through traffic lights and to keep that pack together. And especially if you're riding with a lot of general public people who don't have a whole lot of pack riding experience. If you get a lot of people with no pack riding experience, that pack will stretch out to way longer than what you think it will. The more people you get, you may want to consider at some point in time converting over to a police escort. I know I wanted to do a police escort this year for our orphan run, but I found out after I made the request that you had to have 90 days notice. And because I did not have 90 days notice, my request for police escort was denied. So we wound up having 80 people register, but 65 packs on the ride, 65 bikes on the ride. And that actually worked out pretty well. Had we had 100 or more, I would have been much more concerned, but eight blockers at 65 bikes, it worked out flawlessly. So there's my tips for how to run with blockers. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. My email address is down in the comments, in the written comments here. My P.O. box is in there. Feel free to send me a letter, send me a postcard, send me an email. Follow me on Twitter, or not Twitter, sorry. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Facebook. Shoot me a message, uh, a DM on there. I'll be happy to return it to you, answer any questions I, you may have on pack riding, hand signals, blockers, planning routes, apps to use to plan routes. I'm gonna do a review on the Harley. Harley has a app where you can put your route on the app. I used that for our Dragon Run last year. And bottom line, it sucked. I hated it. Got us lost, I went the wrong direction. And we had 100 bikes in that pack and we went the wrong way out of the campground because it, it, it sucked. So we're going to do a review on that app at some point in time. So maybe what we'll do is we'll load the app onto the phone here so that way as we're rolling down the road you can see the app. Maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll plug my orphan run route in, into that app on here and We'll go, we'll go run the Orphan Run route. We'll use the GoPro to record going this direction. So that way you can look down and see the app. And we'll show you all the bugs that happen with that app. <laughs> Sorry, Harley. Great idea, but your programmers need to do some work. You need to take a little advice from Google. Or maybe somehow you need to interface it with Google. We'll cover that in, a, in another in another video so thank you for joining us yogi yogi clan i appreciate your support please don't forget to hit ooh, big chunk of tire in the road oh, oh. now 
insulation truck just flipped it in the air. Almost took me out. Did you see that? We'll have to play that on slow motion because that just really made my butt pucker. Anyways, go ahead and mash that subscribe button, mash that like button because the more likes on the videos that I get, the better the chance that it's on a suggested list, which means the more views it's going to get, which means that helps me because then more people find this channel. So thank you for joining us, Joey Clan. I hope y'all have a wonderful day. Take care. God bless. Peace.